Welcome back to Trek Exploration. I'm Albie. And I'm Chris. And today we're talking about Season 5, Episode 3 of Discovery, Janal. Janal. Isn't so, that the board game where you get caught in the jungle? Uh, no, that was Jumanji. The, that was the last episode of Discovery. <laughs> the last episode was Jumanji. <laughs> See, that would have been cool if they did Jumanji for that episode. I might have liked it better. I don't know. I didn't like the last episode. I think I think we're going to be surprised and see if we. I like this episode better. Maybe I don't know. It's too bad uh, that we didn't come up with the Jumanji connection when we were doing that episode. But it's also too bad that Culber wasn't in that episode really on the planet because then we we could have called it Humanji. <laughs> it took me a while, but I got there. <laughs> we got there. We got there. So in case you haven't uh, realized, we're talking about the episode Janal. And uh, Chris, can you uh, give me the uh, the uh, synopsis for the episode we're talking about I, today? I would, I would love to. Um, this is Star Trek Discovery, Season 5, Episode 3, Janal. The hunt for the progenitor technology leads the crew of Discovery to Trill, where a uh, Gian Tara ritual allows Culber to host the memory of 800-year-old Trill host Janal Bix, who leads Michael and Book on a deadly mission to recover the next progenitor artifact. The trip to Trill also means an uncertain reunion between Adira and Gray, and Saru is having relationship problems of his own as he attempts to navigate his private and public life as Tarina's betrothed. Also, Commander Rayner is a jerk until he doesn't like him. <laughs> so, this time on Discovery. So you I know. think you wrote that one. You, you write that yes, one? I did write that one. I like yeah. that one. That's that's better than the TV guide one. Okay, yeah. this uh this aired April eleventh, twenty twenty four. The director was Andy Armaganian. Armaganian, and, it looks like. Armaganian. And the writers were Kyle Jaro and Lauren Wilkinson. Hmm. And it might be Yaro. Okay. Yaro. Yeah, yeah, I think you're. I think you're uh, right, Yarrow. Kyle Yarrow. We'll go with that. Is okay. Gift and Kyle. Just, either way, Kyle. I don't know. Um, so l let's do first impressions, and then we'll go to our. Uh, we're we'll go to say hi to everybody and uh, tell them where they can find us. But let's uh, do our first impressions. How's that sound? I'm liking that. Okay. So Christopher D. Philippus, first impressions of Discovery season five, episode three, Janal. Um. I liked it yeah. and I, I liked it, Cool, but I don't know that it was any better <laughs> than last week's episode, which we didn't like that much at all. So I think it was good for different reasons, Okay, um, but there were elements of this one that I found just as tedious as the last episode. So we'll get into all that, but on the whole, you know, had a good time watching it. How about you? I like this episode. Um, judging it against other episodes of Disco, I enjoyed it more. Uh, so I think I think the way I can probably communicate it was that contained in this episode, I think they accidentally made an episode of Star Trek. And that's the part of the episode I enjoyed. Okay. I look forward to hearing which episode of Star Trek they made. Well, was it a remake one, or was it an original episode? Original episode of Star Trek, but it was an episode of Star Trek, I think. Okay. There, there were still well, the 20 minutes before and after that were not really. <laughs> um, but but I think the main meat of the episode, I think, was accidentally an episode of Star Trek. Or what I, I, what I, I think I, of an episode of Star Trek. I, for you to find a nugget of Star Trek and disco is is a grand day indeed. Everybody sound the horns, <laughs> wave your flags, drop the confetti from the sky because. <laughs> I was surprised. I was like, I'm enjoying this. I, uh, and I'm sure we'll get into it later, but I think a lot of it has to do with Wilson Cruz, uh, his performance in this. And of course, uh, returning to Trill. So those are things okay. I really enjoyed, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, Chris, uh, can you say hi to our crew and uh, let hi, everybody crew. know about our crew and how they can become part of our crew? Yeah, well, I mean, you can always become part of our crew by subscribing, liking, and, uh, you know, going to patreon.com slash Trexploration. Uh, there you'll find our Trex. Trek Explorer, our community of Trek Explorers. Um, you can also follow us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Trek Exploration. Um, you can find us on Insta at Trek Exploration Pod. You can find us on X at Trek Exploration. You can always email us 
at uh, what's it, trexplorationpod at gmail.com. So um, once again, uh, no new patrons to report this time, but Always, as always, continued thanks to our current supporters. We have our $5 cadet, Scott Seligman. We have our 17.01 Lieutenant Commanders, Cosplay Dad, one of all, and Fantasy Fan. Thank you all. And, of course, we have our $47 a month member, Captain Charles from Texas. Thank you, Charles, and Fantasy Fan, and one for all, and Cosplay Dad, and Scott. All of your support means all of the world to us. I mean, you kept us alive long enough for Albie to find a nugget of Trek in disco. So well done. Well done, all of you. Can you see me clapping? I got to get that on camera. Okay. Thank you, crew. Thank you so much, crew. Thank you, Captain Charles from Texas. Thank you, Fantasy Fan. Thank you, Cosplay Dad. Thank you, one of all. Thank you, everyone. That is going to help us out moving forward with this show. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but my camera resolution might have gone up a little bit. So uh, you look good things happening. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, making additions to the space station, making, you know, upgrading equipment. We're, we're getting ready to do this. We're, we're going all in. I got the good Pellegrino. It's the lemony kind. So I'm, um, I'm really stepping it up here. I have, I have the peach zero sugar Snapple. Sounds terrible. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Peach tea. <laughs> It reminds me of the peach tea um, mints that they used to have in the little hockey puck, but they don't make them anymore. Yeah, what you said, that thing. I used to eat those like candy. I love peach tea for some reason. Gotcha. Peach tea is delicious. Yeah. Um, so we got a little bit of feedback. If oh, cool. uh, you want to go through that. Yeah. This. Well, you put a poll up on the Patreon site. And um, you had asked people um, how they would rate under the Twin Moons. Now, if you recall... Uh, you and I rated it at, I think I was at two and a half and that was the high rating. <laughs> you, I went with two. You went down to, what you, did you go down two. to two? I didn't want to go two. under two because I thought that would be disrespectful for everyone working so hard. Well, we were in the minority because mm -hmm. uh, the according to our pollsters over on uh, the um, Patreon. Patreon site. Yes, thank you. Uh, sixty-seven percent rated the episode four stars out of five, or four whatever you want out of five, and thirty-three percent rated it as higher than five Whoa. out of five. I don't know who these insane people are, but uh, hopefully, you know. I I find in disco what they found in disco. Yeah, that's my hope well, one day. Find in disco. Um, it's not dead yet. Um, this goes not so dead. It's, it's we did a get a, we have one final uh, season. Yep, that's it. We got some uh, more feedback too. Just a small feedback. note again from our Captain Charles from Texas. Um, Charles. Eventually, we'll get more feedback than from Charles. So yes, we don't want to make you, Charles keep it coming. Show. Yes, please. Um, but Charles, he raises another good point. Uh, he, along with the poll, he wrote, I still want to know where the heck are the Klingons? Did I miss a one-off comment from Admiral Vance? They have, what, nine more episodes to give us some kind of hint? Have we have we heard about the Klingons? Or did they just, you know what they said? You, there was nothing more reviled in Discovery Season 1 than what they did to the Klingons. So, In all of Star um, Trek, really. Almost. Have they been... Have they been burned a little too many times? Like they just don't want to acknowledge Klingons in this. My head cannon is that that uh, virus, that retrovirus that turned them human, but in uh, brown face for a while, uh -huh. and then turned them into whatever discovery abomination of, of Klingons were. Uh, <laughs> that that virus finally did did away with all of the Klingons. Oh, the Klingons so you think the augment virus? Um, so we have Doctor Soon to thank for Klingon genocide. Yes. And any Klingons thinking. that survived, it was because they merged with uh, human DNA. So we have descendants of Alexander uh, because uh, Alexander was one quarter human. And of course, we have uh, Bilana's, uh child that was uh, one quarter human as one well. Quarter, three quarters one human. quarter Klingon. One quarter Klingon. Yeah. So the, the, the only Klingons left in the, what is it, 78th century that we're in now? Are, the 156th the, century. Yes. yes. Are, are are only those Klingons. So that that's that's my thought. All right. Well, I mean, I like that you have like a whole retcon headcanon for this. For me, it's just like, which Klingons do they show? They don't know. 
they don't want to go back to the Klingons that they established as the disco Klingons because everybody hates the disco Klingons, but they don't want to go back to the next gen style Klingons, or I guess now the, the card era Klingons, if we're going to call it that because, uh, it's so wholly different. So do you think it's almost like when uh, the crew of DS nine visited the K nine space station, K seven rather K nine, listen Mm -hmm. to me. (laughs) Space and, and yeah, everybody was, uh, (laughs) where's Sarah Jane? (laughs) Everybody was looking around saying, these are Klingons where, where? And Worf is like, we don't speak of it. I feel like if Michael saw a Picard or a Klingon, she'd be like, these are Klingons where, where? (laughs) So I don't care what kind of Klingon they give us, as long as it's played by JG Hertzler. That's all I'm saying. JG would be nice to have. I mean, house of more talk still going strong. We get his voice on uh, Lower Decks here and there, so that's good. Oh, remind I me to show like you my it, Trek yeah. Intel later. I do have oh, okay. one or more, so that's uh, that's interesting. Um, uh, okay, I, I guess uh, – well, thank you for the feedback, everyone. Charles from Texas, uh, and uh, thank you for all our crew members sticking with us. Really appreciate it. I think it's time to get into uh, the discussion for the episode of Janal. Janal. Well, I mean, where do you Janal. want to start? Man? I'll, I'll maybe, maybe I'll go first this time since you went first last time. Thank you. Thank you for curbing my, my bossy <laughs> pants. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed this episode, not all of it, but most of it. And I think it, it, like I said, I found an episode of Star Trek in there. And I think rewatching this the third time, I thought to myself, you know what, if I, if I, cause I'm an editor by trade, that's what I do for a living. Uh, audio and video editor and i was thinking if i could probably make a great episode of star trek out of this if i cut about 20 minutes out and uh then i was like nah just you know i'll just enjoy what it is because you know it's art it's not my art to chop up you know i'm not gonna make a make a mug or a pin out of the mona lisa it's not the mona lisa but you know what i'm saying um i i i enjoyed so much wilson cruz's performance in this of uh bix which okay. Bix? Uh, hey, Janal. Janal. Oh, yeah, Janal Bix. That makes sense, right? Yeah, that's, that's the name <laughs> of the episode. You want to know, when I was doing the rundown, I was like, oh, which Bix was this? I had the same exact question. I said, <laughs> I had to look it up, and then it said Janal Bix, and I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was shocked by Wilson Cruz's performance, because uh, thus far, he's been um, Culber, Dr. Culber, and okay, and you know, functional, but he's capable of so much more, and uh, I think it really showed in this episode. So that performance is something I really enjoyed. I'm going to agree with you on that. Um, there was just such a an ease to his performance once he became Bix. I like Culber as a character for the most part, but I think he's a little too Mother Hennish. Mm. especially since they got to the 32nd century, they're making him more of everybody's babysitter. And um, I kind of liked the angry, just resurrected fungal hue that didn't know who he was or what he was and, Mm -hmm. you know, had to find himself. And now everything's a little too, a little too, too, you know, it's a little Mm -hmm. too, I don't want to say twee. I don't think the character's twee, but at the same time, just a, 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 a little too caring. Is that a thing? Can you be too caring? That's my problem, Melby. I care too much. My, <laughs> my heart's too big. It hurts so bad. No, uh, but I, I feel like they, they kind of took those shackles off of Wilson in this episode. He was just mm-hmm. able to just breathe, you know, and have mm-hmm. some fun. And the character just seemed so much more natural. Like, I think he would want to play Bix more than he will want to play Culver. <laughs> I don't it seemed know. more fun, like like he was having more fun. That other time, uh, Wilson Cruz, yeah, that was another time he shined. Really, uh, that 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 is was a little bit not my favorite part of things back then. But but in this episode, uh, Wilson nailed it. I I really enjoyed it. I liked the adventure of it. I liked the chase. I liked the chase in this part because it wasn't really they didn't have to make connections that weren't there to move the story forward. Uh, for me, I, I, I like the, I like the references uh, is to all the things that happened, uh, after the chase, the episode, uh, the next generation, finding that little bit of backstory, uh, from Janal. 
uh, Bix. I liked uh, going down to Trill. I liked uh, seeing more about Trill. For me, there's a little bit of a missed opportunity. I would have loved to have, have been a Dax and not a not a not a Bix. I'm 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 of two minds of that. Okay. And the fanboy in me wants that to be a Dax, and it would have been amazing if Culver could have channeled Jed Zia. Mm. That would have been terrific, or Ezri, or Ezri. You know, yeah. I like both. Yeah, but I, I I like both too. I think though that the practical side of me would have rebelled at that, saying, "Of all the symbionts, is Dax the only one?" <laughs> so I'm kind of glad that we have Tall and Bix, and so far no mention of Dax that I can recall, mm-hmm. um, because it just makes more sense in a big universe. Yeah, I th- I think probably Dax was probably on the table, but they probably thought better and thought if we mess this up, people are going to hate us more. So let's not even touch Dax. But mm. if they could have gotten um, Jedzi or Ezri, you know, back the actors, you know, for for something, Would we I have, don't know. You know, I guess they could have uh, shown them in a mirror. I think that's how Ezri did it when she was channeling her past selves. Mm-hmm. She was looking in a mirror and she would see it would be a quantum leap moment. Yeah. So you would still have Can to you have Culver Terry Farrell. I know she's older now and that could have worked somehow, but I don't know how maybe you mean, you mean Mrs. Nimoy? Yes. Mrs. Adam Nimoy. Yes. <laughs> she's Star Trek royalty now. So, uh, love when that <laughs> so yeah. Um, I, I think it would have been nice to have Terry or, or, um, Nicole back, Nicole but Moore back. That would have been nice. Yeah. But again, it's not, it's, it's not about that. And I think that would have been distracting. Like yes. I know that Discovery is trying to be its own thing, and there actually were a lot of story threads that were long time story threads for Disco mm-hmm. that they were able to wrap up here. So um, there was that opportunity as well. Let's talk to and I feel that. like if we had we had had we had you know uh, either Jedzia or Ezrion as the character, it would have taken away from Discovery's place it would have usurped mm-hmm. the you know discovery thing and this is discovery it's not ds9 so yeah um i, I you think if to... stranger worlds did this story went back to trill and did dax i think they would have did it right and maybe they're saving that that would have been emony though if they were doing strange new worlds because oh, they were that's talking true. about emony in the past em- Right, Emony met McCoy, so yeah. it would have been yeah, it definitely would have been Emony at the gymnastics competition. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that would have been cut. cool. Yeah, I feel like that was uh, Kira got to play that one. That was Nana that got to play yeah, Emony. Love Nana. Yeah, really. Can't cool. wait till we really talk cool. about Deep Space Nine coming soon. Coming, coming soon. soon. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I like the Trill Magic. I like the fact that they did. I know I pronounced it wrong. I should have looked or listened to it again, but they call it the the, the Giantara is what I think they called it. That's one of my favorite episodes of DS9 when they go through all the old hosts and they mm-hmm. manifest as part. So this is right in the wheelhouse. I love the fact that they had Culber and that it was an established thing. It's as established as someone doing a mind melt. So to yeah. me, that's, that's terrific. Um, unfortunately, I think one of the things that you liked that I didn't, and this is not just the trill part of it, but it's the relationships part of this episode. Mm -hmm. We had dual relationships highlighted here. Mm -hmm. The one between Adira and Gray and the one between Saru and Tarina. And two more boring, uninteresting relationships you will not find this side of the Delta Quadrant. I mean, (laughs) I am so non-invested in these characters or their relationships. I just find it tedious, especially Adira and Gray. I don't think they have any chemistry at all. And on top of it, I'm just going to say it now so I can get out of the way. The actor that plays Gray is terrible. I mean, just terrible. They wrote him off the show for a reason, in my opinion. I would agree. And that's one of the reasons I never thought Gray was uh, good for Adira because I just don't like Gray's the actor who plays Gray's perf- performance, um, and I just don't think they're right for each other. But that being said, I did like them breaking up, which I was surprised about because it, it gives uh, maybe a new future and story for Adira. Mm. Um, th- they can move on and, and grow up with their life, and uh, they're both young. Of course, Gray's a robot now. Right. So 
that's another thing we, that we don't have to do. Oh, with. that's right. The gray's like a Picard, uh, Picard 9.0, right? Yeah, because uh, Picard is Picard 2.0, and now they're a right. robot. So, yeah, he's he's yeah, he's a robot with with a symbiont. Yeah, he's a robot. How does that work? It's a robot symbiont, obviously. <laughs> I mean, Tall, Tall. Does, do you think Tall has like got a raw deal here? Like, do you think Tall is like what? what, what <laughs> I, I, I keep wanting to curse. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I didn't like them together, really. They're, they have moments uh, during Disco that I did enjoy, but there were few and far between. But uh, the breakup scene here, I identified with a lot. Um, because I've been, uh, an unwilling or unknowing participant in those conversations that turned out to be breakup conversations that I had no idea they were going to be. And I felt that Adira played that, uh, well, or, or uh, and, uh, they, they just, it seemed real to me. And I identified with that because there's been many times where, you know, uh, I was, we were having a conversation and I found out that I was being dumped and I, and, and then you have to act like, oh yeah, I agree. I thought, yeah, mutual. Sure. Of course. But that's, I, I felt that. And I felt that was very realistic. And I've been on both sides of that conversation of the, the, the Jedi mind trick, Bugs Bunnying breakup, like trying the, them trying to make it seem like it's your idea. So gaslighting basically, yes, but I don't think that there was any gaslighting going on here. I just found it real. Okay. I mean, um, I, we had Jet Reno return. Yay! And, so yeah, excited we, for Jet. Yeah, Tig we, we love Tig. Love, Tig, is, love Tig. Tig's always a breath of fresh air when, when she comes always. on screen. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of her stuff was just to lament this, this poor kid's fate because she saw it coming and to yell at Stamets for not being a good space dad and <laughs> protecting her from it or whatever. I... Um, so I, I'm trying again, we, we, we've had this conversation a couple of times now on the show, who are they writing this show for? And it seems mm -hmm. like they're trying to go for a bunch of different demographics. Maybe they're trying to rope in people who are going to be watching the Starfleet Academy show that premieres sometime in 2026 or whatever. But, uh, I I'm mean, dreading this that is already. like, it's just like CW level teen angst nonsense to me. And I just, uh, maybe not quite CW level, not yet. They don't have the time for that kind of nonsense, <laughs> but, um, it's just not interesting to me, but again, I'm, you know, I'm the curmudgeon. I'm like the rainer in the scenario. Like you, you know, I'm, I'm not interested and I'm going to tell you I'm not interested and, and I'm going to go about my day and not care that you might be hurt that I'm not interested. But this to me is just the least of it. I mean, we go to Trill. I knew that we were going to have to have a reunion of these characters. Mm -hmm. I think it's the greatest thing ever that they broke up so that mm -hmm. we don't have to see gray again. Yeah. I, I don't want to see gray again. I, I think the only acting I believe less than Sonequa is gray. <laughs> Uh, who, who plays Gray? Um, I, I can um, never remember his name. It's, um, is it on there? It's on the we sheet. didn't put it on the sheet. Oh, you have to look that up. A guest star, so he was a guest star. So. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, um, yeah, it just takes me out of it every time. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they're earnest, and he he tries, but I just don't. I don't buy the performance ever. Um. Uh, but I guess this also gives closure. Like you said, it, it can set Adira up for something new, something different, maybe make Adira interesting in some way and mm -hmm. put, put aside that baggage because that was, a, if you recall the last episode we did, that was my criticism was that Adira is still nothing but like season one Tilly, but worse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just all, all awkwardness and, you know, maybe competent, but they can't get out of their own way. And that gets tedious to me after a while. So maybe this is a stepping stone towards seeing an arc for the character. Finally, that transcends that maybe. And uh, with gray, I always felt like I didn't like gray. I think it was a performance of the actor, but mm. him being breaking up with uh, Adira I think gave me like a, a reason that like it validated my dislike for the character. Like there's right. something I shady mean, going on with that, with, uh, with gray on, on Trill. Uh, he's already dating someone else or something. All right. I mean, you bring to it your projections. I bring to it my I projections. <laughs> it seems, 
it seemed like, you know, just a natural breakup between two young people. It's fun. Well, I, it was a little I, bit, it was a little bit neat, you know, it was a little mm-hmm. bit, it was a little bit clinical, but. Yeah, it, 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 I, like I said, it was real to me and it was the first time I saw whatever that I, that I saw in that, that was real. It was the first time I saw that, that I can recall in watching all okay. the television. It wasn't overdone. It was just what it was, but it was very real. So Trill, they're on Trill. It gave me, it gave me like DS9 uh, feels and member berries. I think they did that part pretty right. Um, Yeah, there are some aspects of that and it goes back to gray, but it's at the end of the episode that that rubbed me the wrong way a little bit, but, uh, and another part too. Um, but I like that they're back in the caves. Um, they kept it consistent with what they did the first time too, when they joined gray back to, uh, I want to say Dax. I always want to say Dax, but back to Tall. Dix? Jaw. Tall? Tall. Yeah, tall. because because Adira was carrying Tall because Gray mm. had died. That's right. Right. And then once they re- resurrected Gray, I guess now uh, he's he Gray Tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Robit with a symbiote. Um, so they're keeping their own continuity. We didn't have to go into that weird headspace dimension where they did that first time when they were talking to all of the symbionts, if you recall, mm-hmm. um, uh, every version that the symbiont, every host, I should say all the yeah. hosts, not all the, the symbionts. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, Maybe I, I did, watch I did episode again. That was good. I did like that, but here, here's the thing is they could have established that. Then you could have seen, uh, Janal. Mm-hmm. The real Janal, but I'm so glad they didn't go with what this, Disco has already established as maybe being in, in a liminal headspace. They needed somebody out there, mm-hmm. you know, showing them where to go. So enter, enter Culver. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you think of her, Michael, bringing book on this mission? I like seeing book. I like seeing David. Um it, 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 I think there's a trust there uh, that she hasn't really established uh, with the new first officer yet. And uh, Michael knows that book has her back no matter what. And if something's going to happen, it's good to have him there. So I think it made sense in my brain. And I'm glad that uh, that book was down with her because that made that Star Trek part of the episode more more enjoyable and adventurous, I think. All right. All right. And I always think that it's just because show. Yeah, because, because show. that's another reason. She gives, well, and not, for many, for many plot convenient reasons, especially mm-hmm. in this one, the fact that book was there, it wouldn't have worked without any other character. Mm-hmm. Um, the resolution of the episode. Um, but Michael is just like, I don't know if I want to bring you. I'll take it under advisement. Um, you're still in trouble. You're still persona non grata. I don't know that you should be on this mission. And then four seconds later, she's like, okay, I've decided to bring you. Why? Why? Because, oh, because he's your boyfriend. That's why, you know? And also we're going to need him for plot reasons later. Mm-hmm. So I had totally f- forgot that book had that power of his forehead to communicate with bugs. Yeah, I mean, especially, (laughs) I can't, I can't. (laughs) So I don't know. This might be where we uh, might differentiate. So tell me, uh, you've been, you've been talking about it since the top of the show. What specific bits of this stuck out to you as Star Trek that you point to and say that's Star Trek? I would say the, the trill part. Not the trill in the caves and the worms and the ceremony, but more of like the trill. Uh, we're seeing a different uh, symbiont in um, in Culber, uh, Wilson Cruz, uh, and that different uh, persona taking over uh, a character that we know already. Uh, that's a very Star Trek thing that happens a lot, often. I think uh, we've seen that before. And uh, I like the the adventure of that, and I like the little bit of the morality test in it even though uh, Janal gives, gives them a, you know, lets them know, Oh, now we're in danger. Get your phasers out, which was a little bit of a mislead because he wanted to, he wanted to get them on the offensive when the real test was being, uh, you know, just because they're uh, cloaked bugs uh, that look like, um, you know, the alien from Darmok doesn't mean they're all bad. So uh, 
So I, I like that a little bit, and I like I like the adventure and the figuring out of the the that the aliens the bugs weren't like necessarily the bad guy. I think I wrote down um, uh, the devil in the dark. You know, it's that whole example. Like we think it's a bad evil alien, but it turns out it's just protecting its eggs. Yeah, right down to the eggs, right? Yeah, and then of course the Darmok camouflage, the predator camouflage kind of thing going on. And and just mm. the, that that part, the middle part, I really thought was a good episode of Star Trek. Now that's funny because to me that was the dumb action part. Like we <laughs> need invisible invisible trill bugs to fight to get to this place. And um, I I think it could have been. And I think what saved it, like is what I said in the beginning, was was uh, Wilson Cruz's performance of Janal. I think. No matter what silly like tropes or action or unnecessary action even that was going on during the episode, and again the Brewster's Millions uh, visual effects budget, um, I think I think Wilson Cruz's performance in the episode really just tied it together and gave it what it would have otherwise been missing. So that's why I enjoyed the whole thing as a whole. I think. All right. I mean. To me, the the fighting the bugs part was almost no different than the running from drones part in the last episode. Mm -hmm. Like it was just another set piece obstacle that they had to get through to get to the next piece of the puzzle, the next the next piece of tech. So I was kind of just bored by that, even though it was visually spectacular and it was supposed to be exciting. I wasn't excited so much as just waiting to get through that part. Um, but. That being said, what annoyed me even more, and I knew it was coming, and it just seemed so hack, that was the test all along, that you <laughs> saw them as not monsters, but, but it's just like, shut up, stop it. I knew you were going to do that nonsense, stop, you know? So, so you were ahead of the story this time. I think so, yeah. And I said, I hope they don't do that. I hope it's a real danger. I hope that it wasn't, that was the test all along. And no, it was the test all along. Oh, by the way, here's the thing under a random rock that would never have fallen down in 800 years, <laughs> you know, being so, so buried so deep and so, so expertly away from the elements. He just, whoop, there it is right yeah. under a rock. Well, he blew I the mean, dust off. I guess I, I yeah I hit it so I hit it so well and so oh it was a red herring. Um, I like the red herring discussion because I never understood about red herring. I didn't know herrings weren't red. I just assumed they were. <laughs> I'm not a fish guy. I'm not a fishmonger, so I don't know these things. What color are herring? <laughs> I, I all fish to me are like bluish gray. So okay. maybe maybe brown with spots, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they do have red fish. I've eaten red fish, so I'm sure they're red fish. That we can eat. One Tropical fish, fish, fish are probably red, like red, red Grammys, fish. blue Grammys, right? Mm -hmm. So Dr. Sue said it. Right? Yep, exactly. But uh, yeah, I mean. And it wasn't really a red herring. It, it was more of just a, like a, a mislead. So I guess it was in a way, but not a, in a mystery, but not of a whodunit. Doesn't it have to be a whodunit to be a red herring? I don't know. Maybe no, anything, anything that's misleading is okay. a red herring. You why? Know? Do we know why? So, you, you know why stuff. is anything that we don't understand called a thing? <laughs> Star Trek, the motion picture? Yes. It's just the noun, Bones. Um, <laughs> it's just the way we talk. <laughs> yeah, just, just English. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm i glad that you found something of value in that. I'm glad that someone somewhere enjoyed that bit of the story. Another thing I enjoyed about it, which uh, gave me the feels of, again, maybe um, Jellico, but I'm also thinking like some story that involved Riker that I can't quite put my finger on to where uh, it might have been with maybe Pegasus. I don't know where, where something's going on and we quite don't understand what's going on. But at the end, like uh, um, we find out that uh, the first officer, what's his name again? The guy you like? Jellico. Oh, oh, the new guy. Yeah. Rainer. Rainer. So I, I think uh, the Rainer actually finding out and being interested in the people and we feel like he's just doing it because he was told to do it. Uh, but he actually like is understanding them better by the, the getting this quick summary or the one story to know them. I kind of enjoyed that like turn at the end. 
Like I didn't see that coming, which I should have. I should have, honestly, but I didn't. So I I enjoyed that part. It seemed very maybe uh, fifth season next gen moments. All right. Um, I had problems with that part, but there's just one part also. Do, can we just stick with the bug thing for a second? Sure, sure, sure. What if book didn't have the power to communicate telepathically with animals? What if book wasn't like Aquaman hmm. and couldn't talk to the bugs? Would then Bix have just let them die? Yes. Yeah, he that said that. Yeah. Day. But here's the thing without books superpower, mm-hmm. there's, there would have been no way for them to really communicate their intentions to the bugs. You think the bugs would have been cognizant enough to notice that there wasn't a phaser without Bix, uh, without book saying we come in peace. And now you can somehow read their minds because they're receptive to what you're saying because they don't see a phaser like that to me again was just nonsense. It quite frankly, quite frankly, had it been Saru and Michael down there, what would they have? Would Saru have done like a bovine dance (laughs) to get them to understand? Like you think that's why Dr. Is it Dr. Kovic sent sent book with them? Cause maybe he knows more about the, uh, the, puzzle they have to go through then he's letting on wow you're giving the show a lot more credit than i am sure <laughs> i'm trying to find the good it gives, I really me, am. It gives me a reason and i'm good with that so thank you i'll say yeah. thank you i'm trying but to no find I'm, I, I'm calling i'm calling shenanigans on that one <laughs> michael showing her hands without a phaser in them even though she's still got a phaser because all she's got to do is think phaser yes. and it's in her hand right she so, didn't have to snap you're right yeah yeah um I think like if that was like, say Kirk era and Kirk was doing that, like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm coming in peace. I'm putting myself out there. Uh, can we, can we talk about this? You know, I, I buy it a little bit. I mean, I guess you could say that they're also though, sorry, but um, as much as it's like one of the greatest episodes of Trek of all time, devil in the dark never would have worked without a mind melt. Correct. So that was convenient for a story purpose as well. Holy and crap. I've never really considered that. So I might be taking discovery for to task for something that TOS has already done, but the mind meld is just so iconic. And the fact that Spock is able to communicate using that power is fascinating. No pun intended hmm. in that context, but to me it's, it's hacky in this context. And now, so now, this is a Chris. I just realized that this is a Chris problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you've now you you've now broke the episode a little bit for me because what I liked about it was that it had the the feeling of a Trek episode. But now I'm realizing that it might lead more to the AI copying an old episode of Star Trek and filling in <laughs> and changing the names because instead of Spock mind melding, book can communicate with uh, bugs and slugs. Yeah, yeah, and we have the eggs uh, the where they eggs. made it a silicone. Man, the and, AI again got us. And uh, and go? you know, and I completely forgot because I haven't seen Dormok in a million years. I forgot mm-hmm. that they had the predator style mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. monster on that planet. All they needed was a Mugatu, and <laughs> we would have been in business. Yeah, we find out more about Mugatu in um, Lower Decks. That's <laughs> funny. So I'm sorry, I kind of interrupted your train of thought with. Uh, with uh captain rainer or commander rainer now uh and so and i his- like i like that story arc i like that tilly uh told him what to go do with himself and uh was she was kind of admonished for not giving the permission to speak freely uh before but in this episode she just said what she thought and she didn't care and i, I like that and i like that relationship that they're building i think if discovery was to go on and um Again, I'm uh, Rainer. Uh, if, if Rainer was going to stay with the crew, and it would go further, that little uh, that little relationship, the friendly friendliness, and also the adversarial nature of their uh, Tilly and Rainer together, I'm starting to like that. Okay, I mean, I I, I guess that's pretty cool to come away with that. Mm-hmm. I'm of two minds again of the Rainer thing, and I feel like it gets back to the root of the problem that I had with Rainer in the last episode. Mm. 
coming in, solving the problem sort of by undercutting the existing characters who probably deserve more after five seasons. In this case, I've, I've said it multiple times. I'll say it every time I'm on the show. I don't even know the names of the bridge crew on disco. Mm -hmm. And instead of, Rainer really getting to know them so that we can get to know them. We have these, you have 20 words and we have one sentence about each character and then they go away. And then Rainer somehow magically knows everything about them and who they are and what they find most important in the world. Um, I guess that's good for him. I wish I knew. I wish I was invested in those characters as he was after 20 words. I can't manage to do it after five seasons. Chris, so, that was 113 words. Oh, okay. I'm gone. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, I think that whole 20 word thing was just to set up the joke about Colin Rayner. So, yeah. But it worked for me. I enjoyed that part. I enjoyed, I enjoyed Tilly's uh, 20 word haiku. All right. I thought that she was going to call him an asshole, but. Oh, see, yeah, I, I, went, I went with. But, right. Um, They're all in the same region. One thing that I really liked and I was disappointed was we got more interesting characters in those 20 lines from those five or so people uh, that Rainer was interviewing than we got for like the main cast of the show. Like, I want to see a show about those people. I want to see the shiphead. You know, I want to see more of uh, Tig. You know, I want to see the other people that they they interviewed. The the one that uh, plays Monopoly and is great at game board games. I want to see an episode all about them. I want to see a Lower Decks episode, not the animated show, like the Lower Decks original Star Trek Next Generation. Of course, without the death, but um, uh, uh, just about them because they seemed interesting <laughs> and real. They seemed like real to me that more real than a lot of the main cast. So I I I think it's a missed opportunity. So I think it's possible to make good characters in Discovery. I think almost like they were like, okay, you, you wrote these characters good, but so we only going to have 20 lines of them. Cause we don't want people to realize we can do that. You know, don't let them know we can do it. Yeah. See, I don't know if I'd go with that because you think that they're interesting because they're different from the characters, you know, but maybe now with the problem that you have with the writing on this show, could it mm -hmm. be that once they started to try to flesh those characters out, you would become just as dis disenchanted, you know, maybe. because they don't, you know, all the, all they have to do is give you a hint of something interesting and then have uh, Rainer expound upon it like Sherlock Holmes, just completely circumstantially and thinking that he knows who they are. And you okay, put your finger so, on it. So uh, which was what? Uh, Sherlock, the, the TV show Sherlock and Sherlock mm. Holmes more in general, but specifically Sherlock. I think that's uh, where I was getting what Rainer did where he, he knew more about them than they said. So, yeah. You know, and here's the thing. I love uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories. I, I, I have many volumes, many copies. I've read quite a few of it. I think most of them. Mm -hmm. And I love the character, but it struck me from story one that Holmes is not a good police. He happens to be right, but... Everything that Holmes does is based on personal observation and circumstantial evidence. And it just happens to pan out in the end, but no police force would act like that. So it's I, it, like in modern times, you look at a character like that and say, well, no, the observer effect and just the fact that you don't really know who these people are. You just see a speck of mud on their boots and think that they were in this region of Tuscany 30 <laughs> years ago or something. Well, there's no proof there. That's just your idea. And I feel like Rainer is doing the same thing here. So again, as maybe I'm backing up again, saying maybe this is a Chris problem. It just, it, it strikes things in stories. I like that kind of annoy me already. And this is a character I like who is potentially, you know, a really great character for the season who is intentionally annoying, but now I'm finding stuff that he's doing is pressing one of my buttons. So I'm like, mm -hmm. don't do that. So I don't know. And and you're right. Whereas uh, I was just watching the episode, assuming what Rainer said was true about these characters. She could have it totally wrong. Yeah. He, he could yeah. just be like, well, this is what, it, until he could have said, no, I mean, you only gave the guy 20 words. He hates ships. 
You know, he just, he, he, you know, he loves ships so much. He's a shiphead. He's going to be a captain one day if he wants to. Why? Because he just said that he liked disco and its lines. I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, I like the way a Thunderbird looks, but I don't know anything about cars. Mm. So I don't true. know. So, uh, so what do you think about Anthony Rapp uh, being given more than 20 lines and what he said and what he's excited about this technology? Do you think it's going to lead somewhere? Like we're like they're giving us clues to where the story's going. Maybe I, I, I have to think that they're teeing it up for that. I think I get lost and maybe I'd, I'd like to get your, your feelings on this because we discussed it a little bit in episode one, but the whole Stamets looking for a legacy thing hmm. it doesn't really interest me that much. And I, I don't know why they're that's going to be the arc for the character as they're going out. I guess maybe they're thinking in terms of finality. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to be leaving these characters for good, you want to set them up for how they'll be remembered by posterity. And I feel like they're telegraphing that so much with the Stamets character this season. It's a byproduct of season five. But I say that, but they didn't know they were going to end until until mm. they were done almost with principal photography. So uh, again, this, is, uh, I'm going to fall back. This is a Chris problem. I'm now I'm, I'm Holmes. I'm, I'm Rainer. I'm making assumptions. They did do reshoots on, when they found out it was yeah. uh, the final season. Do you think they reshot some of this stuff? I don't know I what they reshot. It'd be interesting to yeah. find out. I don't think I'll buy the Blu-rays. That's, that's the one <laughs> series I might not have on Blu-ray, <laughs> but for <laughs> DVD, um, <laughs> But uh, do you think they're setting up um, Stamets to be, you know, to sacrifice himself at the end of the season? Oh, I didn't go there. That's where I went with it. All right. Talk to me. What do you mean by that? Well, he he wants to be remembered right in the future. And he wants like a legacy. He wants to do something with his life. And he feels up until this point, he really hasn't. That's what the vibe I was getting. And that he really needs to pay his rent. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you and that rent. But where does that where does that dovetail into him sacrificing himself somehow? Well, he did mention about the technology and, and, and it, like missing some things because of the half life, and then the technology could possibly resurrect the dead. Now, I think that's another issue totally. And I, when he mentioned that, okay, yeah, much bigger conversation yeah, there. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. thought maybe there were basically what they're going to do is use that as the triple in the Star Trek 2009 thing where they say, okay, this is how we bring somebody back from the dead. Now forget about it. And then later on, somebody's going to die. And then I'm going to use this technology to resurrect whoever died. So I think that's and then, telegraphing one of the final episodes of the season. You think it'd be like Gage Creed from Pet Cemetery? Possibly. They'll come back and kill Fred Gwynn. Yeah. Fred Gwynn, uh, Herman Munster. That's the best. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> sometimes dead is better. <laughs> so do you, do you think they're setting him up to sacrifice himself or do you, and, and uh, on the different note about the bring resurrecting the dead, because are they talking about like, uh, I know we got Kirk's remains and we got uh, Archer's remains. At least we did in the 24th century. There's yeah. We're not going to see Kirk, Kirk or Archer. I mean, okay. well, we've already had Culber resurrected from the dead. Yeah. But wasn't that just so, with, with like the poltergeist, he came through the TV or something. He was magic, magic spore culber, magic yeah, fungus right. culber. We got robot gray, magic spore culber. I mean, is anybody who they so were? Haven't haven't we done this like a few times on Disco already? Yeah. Well, who would die? Who would we? That would be sad if like they killed off somebody we didn't care about at all and be like, oh okay. They the, they'll kill Tilly. Tilly? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, she's well, that's why they called her, her back. Tilly. She's in she's in Starfleet. So, yeah, Academy. that's what I mean. So that's what I'm saying. They'll kill Tilly. And it will be anticlimactic because we know that Mary is off shooting. <laughs> they and, would uh, do that, wouldn't they? Right. right. And uh, here's the thing. I oh. think I saw like headlines for an article. It might have been on Trek movie or whatever. Okay. But it was like Mary Weissman doesn't want to talk about her uh, Starfleet Academy show spinoff. And maybe she doesn't want to because Tilly dies and she doesn't want to remind everybody that Tilly is going to be very much alive after the show wraps. So, yeah. I all conjecture on my part. I completely, quite frankly, Albie, I completely forgot about that aspect of the episode. So you brought it up right now, but it is very interesting that mm-hmm. they would go there and talk about creating life and resurrecting the dead. And 
I I wonder if they're setting it up since everything seems to be magic um, in that future as like maybe a true singularity where life as we know it changes in ways that we can't comprehend. And that's where we leave off with disco, kind of like, kind of like Decker and Aaliyah at the end of the motion picture. Maybe they're setting it up so that the entire oh, <laughs> da, 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 da. you hear that, <laughs> Decker? Not Decker unit, Decker. Um, so um, maybe, maybe they're going for that grand that grand finale, like making it really like transcending and the human adventure is just beginning kind of deal. Maybe that's when the humans turn into Q continuum when they discover oh, that's the right. progenitors technology. And uh, they meet uh, William Campbell and John Delancey on yep. the other side, uh, Trillane and Q. And I'm just uh, they go related and... to William Campbell. Oh yeah. Marriage. Yeah. My, the my, late, the late William Campbell. My, I want to say, a cousin to my half sister or something. I don't know. Was this space balls? <laughs> no, this is true. <laughs> Not my cousin's roommates. Former. No. Um, yeah. What does that make you? Nothing. Come on, finish it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I loved William Campbell's performance as yeah. Trelane and as a uh, Colo so much that I mm-hmm. tried to find other William Campbell movies. And there's like mm-hmm. only one. <laughs> oh, and it I wasn't that great, that. you know. So, um, but I'm glad that you now we have the William Campbell uh, connection on the show. Connection. See if you can get him on. See if you can get him on. <laughs> I think he's dead. <laughs> oh, he's way dead. <laughs> yeah, way dead. But I'll I'll try. You know, you never know. We've gotten some people <laughs> before. So, uh, so so where do you think they're going with that storyline? I, I which one the 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 I the no, human adventure the, uh, the, uh, gonna... the the Paul Stamets. I, what, I what don't know. I think why does he want to be remembered? What's he going to do to be remembered? I think that he's the one that's going to crack the the progenitor code okay. and usher in and usher in the revolution, mm-hmm. usher in the singularity. I that's you. I mean, why else would they have him being able to, you know, go, go through that Romulan tricorder data? Like, why wouldn't Zora have realized about Half Life? Why wouldn't an AI have have made such a leap data would have figured it out in four seconds absolutely and for an android four seconds is a very very long time indeed very long time almost an eternity yeah yeah i mean what was what was the actual unit uh in first contact like 0.07 seconds or something yeah right (laughs) (laughs) so (sighs) what do you think i mean why 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 do you think they're setting this up I'm struggling because I want to know, but I think I'm missing the whole point of the season because I think what did did Tilly mention in this episode or at one point, like then we find our, what created us. Is that what we're doing now? So she said something like that. Yeah. It's the old Roddenberry trope. Let's go find God. Yeah. I'm not excited for that. I'm not excited for the conclusion of that. Like what could they do there that could be worth all this uh, puzzle building? Well, you know what? Uh, we'll finally hear from God what he needs with a starship. <laughs> That's where we're going. Excuse me. What does God <laughs> need with a starship? All right. I'm going to check my notes. All um, right. I have, um, well, I mean, we never talked about, because um, we got so sidetracked with, yeah, you know, talk to me. Dumb trill bug action. What What do you think about this whole Saru uh to to Tarina Mishigash. Uh well I, I think it's interesting that they added in the wrinkle of her Vulcan assistant. What was his name? Mr. Uh Duvin? Duvin? Something sure. like that. Yeah. I thought that was interesting and it was like to add intrigue and maybe like it gave me vibes of um maybe uh Sarek when he had the what was it, Bendai syndrome or something. Uh, where he he needed somebody to watch over him and like was like overprotective, they were overprotective mm-hmm. of him. Their uh, his aides, so I think there's a there's a something of that going on, but also like uh, there might be something um, surreptitious that 
her aide is trying to accomplish without her knowing it. I don't know. Like, I'm interested in that part. And I, what, again, I find their relationship and the portrayal of their relationship and the time we spend on their relationship less than compelling. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that it's a chore to get through those scenes, but I'm like, okay, um, I guess we're developing the story. I'll, I'll get through it. What I liked about the resolution of that is that I feel like Saru came to a conclusion that many people in long-term relationships, guys, I mean, come to where you don't need to handle everything. You don't need to rescue your partner all the time and make everything better. And she basically, you know, just slap them down on that. I did like and that. She said, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of any time I ever mm -hmm. told you that I needed your assistance in, in conducting myself and your mm -hmm. protection and stuff like that. And it's just like, Oh snap. <laughs> so so I, did like I, I, I did like that aspect of it because it's a message that I think a lot of guys, uh, and I'm guilty of it. You just want to go in and run everything and mm -hmm. fix everything and, and make sure that everybody's okay. And, doesn't work that way. You just got to support the person you're with, stand by them. And mm -hmm. Saru comes to that conclusion at the end. Mm -hmm. So it was one of the few times in disco that they telegraphed their message because the show has a habit of doing it in the beginning and the end with the UC Timmy moments. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm stealing off a mission log. I don't mean to do that. <laughs> but I find it cloying a lot of the times. This in this case, I found it refreshing, and maybe because I recognized it, maybe because I res it resonated with me. Yeah, as as a as a male growing up at this time, I I feel like I'm I'm I want to be a problem solver in the relationship. I want to be the caretaker in the relationship. I want to be the protector, and I don't mm -hmm. know if that's instinctual or societal, uh, but I I you know subconsciously feel like that's my only value is to solve problems and to take care of others. So I could see uh, Saru having that and I could see her saying, no, I don't need that. And I, I did enjoy that part. Um, but th the relationship as a whole has been very boring to me. I mean, uh, we're going to, we're contrasting that versus like, um, like season one, um, Stranger Worlds with Spock and what is it? Tapel? To Pring. To Pring, to Pring. And uh, you no, know, no, 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 no uh to paul yeah it's like to paul but different oh i'm thinking to power no it is to bring it is to okay. bring i was thinking to power is the and thou in a muck time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. to bring is the girlfriend like that that relationship is hot sexy romantic flirty even though they're vulcans you know they still mm -hmm. have that romantic connection there and they're 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 doing something and like i feel no romance here at least in season five Season four, I did feel a little bit of it between them uh, in their scenes. Like I felt like the aw and a little bit of the 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 joy for them finding each other. But there's nothing that happened this season yet that made me excited about this part of the story. Um, and maybe because both characters are so subdued. I mean, uh Saru is Mr. Kind and Gentle, not kinder, gentler. And, and that was supposed to be as a backstop or juxtaposition against Michael, who could be hot headed. And then you have, I guess, this Navarre chancellor, president, whoever she is. I don't, is she ambassador? What does she do? I know that she's the head of the now Vulcan Romulan planet that's called Navarre. So, like, she's somebody. Yeah. I, but but the thing is, she's just as stayed and measured because she's a Vulcan. Mm -hmm. So she plays a Vulcan very well. I have oh, to yes. say, um, of of all the Vulcan portrayals that I've seen on Star Trek, I have a hard time with anybody except Nimoy mm -hmm. getting it right. Like, I don't think that Vulcans are ever done right after Nimoy. I, they're, they don't they don't understand the essence of what makes a Vulcan a Vulcan. It, I feel like she approaches it because I can't wait till you meet later seasons, uh, Tuvok. I, I, Tuvok is one of the ones that I point to and say wrong. 
<laughs> so we'll we'll go to it. Yeah, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, I think we'll he's much different it. after he spends a long time with Tank Girl, but that's a different episode. All right. I mean, yeah. So we'll we'll I I would I look forward to one of the few things I look forward to in 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 the uh, monumental uh, uh, task ahead of us of watching all of Voyager is to see if I will get to like Tuvok. Because right. we'll see. Yeah. That might be the question of the episode. Do you like Tuvok yet? <laughs> I, I we'll have a definite decision by the time we get to Tuvix. Yeah. Uh, oh my Tuvix is Don't get me started on Tuvix. Le- legendary happened. with Tuvix. It never happened. I've I've, ne- I've never even seen the episode and I have opinions. Really? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wait till you get there. Yeah. So uh, Rennie Rennie cried. She cried. Yeah, Cuz Jane weighs a monster. Yeah. But only in that episode, so I, I, it never happened. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Foreshadowing. Uh, what else you got written down about this episode? Talk, talk to me about stuff. Bring things up. I want to know. I want to I want to. I mean, I, I think I, I, went, I went over most of my, my, big, my big things. Thank you again for bringing up the whole thing of this technology, being able to resurrect life and stuff like that. Um. Do you see this as a softening of Rainer? Do you see this as him opening up a little bit more and becoming more likable? Or do you think that that was just something that he decided to share with Tilly? I think it, yes, but only with Tilly. And I think we're only going to see that with Tilly. I think he's still, uh, you know, butthurt that he got demoted. And he, mm. he wanted to be uh, still in Starfleet. So he took the demotion instead of getting fired. Um, but I think we're going to see that relationship with Tilly. I think we're still going to see two different Rainers, one with the rest of the crew and one with Tilly. And, um, I'm looking forward to the Tilly Rainer relationship, which I never thought I'd say, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, I might end up coming around and liking him in the end. Like, you know, they're doing the whole Shaw thing. I think I've seen that online. Like they're doing Shaw again, you know, in, in, in this season, right after the last season of Picard. You know, they're doing the same thing, taking somebody that you're obviously not supposed to like and then uh, turning him to where you like him. So, but I, I'm here for it. I'll watch it. All right. And maybe if they need a noble sacrifice, maybe he's the one that goes so that they can keep all of our dis- disco family alive and well. And that going might on be, adventures. You, you, and, might, you might have put your finger on it. Yeah. But then yeah, they wouldn't bring I'm him back. Actually, so maybe, maybe, but, maybe, uh, maybe Stamets has to choose one person to bring back and it's not him. Maybe, maybe. All right. Yeah, I mean, the question all- I had that came up on uh, online when I was reading about this episode was, or, or or this season, Rainer has 30 years of Starfleet experience. Wasn't it last season that there was just like one guy on a Starfleet outpost? Uh, and like, that was all that was left of the whole Federation was just one dude. That was a mm-hmm. generation. No, I mean, that was all that showed to the outside world. And that's, yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to explore those quote 30 years because mm-hmm. with everything that was going on when they first zapped into the 31st century, uh, there was still a star fleet. It was just well hidden because it was so decimated. Mm. So, I find it plausible. I mean, they had those ships when they did find them. They did have a That's fleet true. of some sort. So they had to be doing something. They weren't just sitting there at that space dock. <laughs> so, But they couldn't warp, right? So they were pretty much stuck in, right. s- in a very small part of the galaxy. Right. So and that's why he even said, you know, if I had a pathway drive it'd be different, but I'm stuck with burn technology here. Mm-hmm. So they don't even have the lithium from what I can tell, or maybe their warp is, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, it'd be interesting if they went into it, but maybe it wouldn't, <laughs> you know, um, one thing there'll that be, I there'll liked, be a book, there'll be the, there'll be the Rainer book. I just thought about that, but I was like, mm-hmm. I will never read a discovery book. I tried to yeah. read a couple of them when they first came out. Really? <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't. I don't know what it is. What the hell is it? Why? I want to like it. I want to enjoy it. It's one thing okay. I enjoyed about this episode was the whole on three discussion. It, like one, two, three. Is it one, mm. two, three, go or one, two, three? <laughs> that's a that's a thing we struggle with today. Everybody has a different idea. Do you go on three or one, two, three, go? And I, I, I thought it was fun to see that they haven't resolved that yet so far in the future. One of the things cool. we'll struggle with forever. There you go. 
So, I mean, yeah, if that's the level of where we're at, I think maybe it's time. Maybe we start wrapping up a little bit. I would agree. I, I can tell you, I can tell you one thing that, that kind of annoyed me. And again, it's because of my disdain for the character of gray, mm -hmm. but did we need a 35 minute soliloquy at the end of the episode with gray explaining to the trill masters, what it is to be a symbiont and it, like the whole meaning of the society. Isn't he there to learn that instead of to tell them that I'm I, just, I, I think they just wanted to give the character of gray as much as they could being, it was their going away episode. Yeah. Kind of like I uh, agree. final mission with Wesley almost. But uh, except final mission. Movie. I thought was good. Yeah, it was I done agree. better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, the other thing about Trill was, uh, what was the Trill leader's name? Like something 11 or XI? The the one Z. that gave him the riddle at the beginning on the bridge yeah. of the hologram? Yeah, Z. Z, I yeah. think, was his name. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the beginning of the episode, it's, it's like, oh, I don't know anything else. From now on, you're on your own. You have to figure this out all by yourself. And then they beam down to the Trill cave and he's like, hey, how you doing? I thought that was <laughs> weird. I mean, like, well, what? he was there. He, yeah. he was there. But you're on your own. Like, I don't know. What are you saying is I don't know anything. I I just know I was supposed to get this answer. I, I just got the impression that he was like the gatekeeper. And after that, you know, right. they were on their own. And then he's just there. So Who was the what do you master? think about Maul being uh, hidden among uh, the rest of the cave? That was, that was my last point. I mean, they okay. were talking, going on and on about how Trill security forces could handle anything. And we got it covered and all this. Now, where else would a stranger stick out? More apparently than in such <laughs> an enclave of acolytes and what amounts to on Trill a secret society, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I, I, I really think that that was a real boner. I, just mm -hmm. like no one is going to recognize this absolute stranger that is just walking among them. I mean, you're in those caves 24 seven doing nothing but like stirring the ponds and uh, feeding the goldfish. And <laughs> the only thing you can see is stalactites and the same nine people. Mm -hmm. So this one is not going to just the smell alone, I think would anyway. Yeah. I thought that was dumb in, in case you hadn't gathered. How about you? <laughs> the only plausibility that I, I got from that is Maul was there. Yes. As one of the trill, but it was while uh, the, the Starfleet personnel were visiting. So like, it wasn't like, who's this in my living room? It's like, there's 15 people in my living room. Who knows if it's 14, 15 or 16. So I kind of thought that maybe she could get away with it, but okay. I did find it strange. One thing that bothered me about this episode, I'm sorry. Another thing was they had so <laughs> many good music cues, so many good music cues from other eras let's say a star trek maybe that made me reminiscent of different things in star trek but they were completely unearned unearned so when i heard them i was like how dare you <laughs> how dare you sir i would tell you that i would go back and try to fish those out so i could feel that indignance with indignance with you but i don't think i'm gonna go back no i'm not uh so no, I'm going to feel I, the I think I'm only going forward right now. from now on. I, I will disco. tell you this. If, yeah. if there was an episode of disco uh, this season that I would watch again um, so far, this is the most likely candidate. This I would one. agree. Although I've seen all of them now, you know, a couple of times um, mm -hmm. at least because of the, uh, for us to watch it. But um, I found this one to be uh, the most engaging. And I guess maybe we're getting into some final thoughts on that. If, oh yeah. Uh, final thoughts. Yeah. Christopher D. Philippus, final thoughts and out of five rating on Janal season five, episode three of Star Trek discovery. Yeah. As, as I was sort of uh, sliding in, in there, it, like it, this seems to me like, the season is finding its footing a little bit. The story was a bit more interesting. We had big, dumb, invisible bug action, but we're always going to have some kind of big, dumb action sequence in disco. So at least this one was in service to a story and characters that for the most part I enjoyed. I had problems with it. Uh, the relationships portrayed were not the relationships that give me any kind of, you know, joy to sit through, but at least we know one of them is over and never to be speaking of again, spoken mm -hmm. of again. And um, the other one is 
still evolving and it ended in a place that I found interesting anyway, even though the journey wasn't especially interesting. So, um, I would say that this is probably the most solid episode of the season so far. And as a result, I'll give it three and a half woo woo assholes out of five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, I'd say this is the most watchable of this season so far. I would agree with you there. I don't see, I don't see it as something I'm going to want to go back and watch, but it's something I will if I'm going through, like if I have to do a um, chronological watch through or a complete watch through one more time, <laughs> then like if I force myself to do it, I'll do it. But I won't, I won't hate that. I had to watch that episode. I, it wasn't, it wasn't for me nails on a chalkboard, like the previous episode or dry popsicle sticks. It was, it was uh, in, enjoyable in many parts. And I only fi- found myself uh, doing the face palm a few times during the episode. So that's uh, one of the better ones. And of course we had uh, uh, Tignatero in it. So any episode with Tignatero, you know, it makes, makes me happy because she's in it. So I would like to see her and Saru interact more. That would have been good. Um, I was excited for the end where the uh, little replicator bug, little replicant bug uh, went into Adira's arm because I know that now blue, uh, blue Del Barrio has some, something to do in the next episode or one of the next episodes, we're going to see, we're going to see them go through something with that, whatever in it. I don't think it's just like a tracking thing or something. Wait, well, well, refresh my memory. Did I miss something? uh, Well, when, um, when Maul was in the caves and they were all hugging and saying goodbye, uh, a little, like a little nanite crawled from uh, Maul onto, onto Adira's arm. Oh, well, I think that it's just a tracking device. You think so? I hope it's something that like, that like uh, that makes um, oh, what am I trying to think of? Remember Jordy in uh, Generations? Uh, Remember Mercurian Barry's? Candidate? Yeah, M- M- Mercurian. How do you say that? Manchurian. Manchurian. Manchurian candidate. candidate. So I think that's going to reach reprogram. I'm hoping it's going to reprogram Adira and and Blue will have something more to do. All right. All right, that's good. I thought it was just so that they could solve the riddles and um, Maul and Locke could just be there at the end to swoop in like Belloc yeah. and, uh, <laughs> you know, take take it and they can say, that belongs in a museum. And <laughs> they just laugh and go away. For some reason, so. when you said Belloc, I thought Belloc in a puppet head. And I was like, how does that apply? But I'm sure you're right. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many sounds in the English language. <laughs> and now, think and I'm now watching. I'm thinking of uh, little Clint Howard. Yes. Oh. Uh, Who's been in every uh, incarnation, I think, of Star Trek. Yes, he has. Um, buttons and bows, buttons and bows. <laughs> so I, I think I, I, it made me excited to find out where it was going. So that I think that was a good music cue, that ominous music cue, in case you missed the little bug, robot bug crawling into... Yeah, I did. I must have. I must have gotten a text or something at that moment. <laughs> so, but I, that it made me intrigued because as we record this, I think in about an hour and a half, uh, the next episode of Disco drops. Uh, so we'll be talking okay. about that in a few days to a week. What's that about, uh, Christopher? Can you tell? Oh, me? the next episode. Oh, I didn't get my rating, did I? You never. You never gave your rating. I'll give you my rating. The, the, so my final thoughts is I enjoyed it. Uh, it was there was an episode of Star Trek in there. Wilson Cruz was amazing. Oh, a little tidbit I found out on um, an interview he did with Will Wheaton. Did you know what uh, how he approached the character of Janal? Mm, no. He was he was trying to embody Jack Palance in City Slickers. I'd have to watch City Slickers again. Wow. Oh, it's Good one of my favorites. I have it on Laserdisc. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna give it. Uh, I think my highest rating so far for a disco episode. Uh, three Sluggo Colas. Oh, yes. It was nice to see the Sluggo Cola. Yeah. So I'm yeah, going to give it a solid cool. three. Yeah. I didn't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Another, another, and another good DS9 callback. So, yeah, exactly. And, so, uh, the right. callback that they mentioned on, uh, um, on, um, I can do it. Lower decks. Oh, speaking of lower decks, I got to check and tell before you read the uh, and, well, next week's episode, or do you want to read so, that first? Uh, Slug- Sluggo Cole is my episode crush. Ah, uh, oh yeah, episode crush. Ah, uh, you know what? I was gonna go with Tig as soon as I saw uh, Jet Reno. 
Taking the okay. tarot. I was going to go there, but I'm hoping she's going to do more. So for this episode, I have to say Wilson Cruz, 100% the portrayal gotcha. of Janelle. Total crush. Gotcha. But awesome. Tig Notaro is really close, but she didn't have enough to do. Right up there. Right up so there. Okay. Hopefully soon. Hopefully we get a whole Tig thing going on. Okay. So you got to do a Trek and Tell and you got to ask me some trivia questions. Okay. Trek and Tell. My Trek and Tell is guess what came in the mail today? Woo! Uh, Oh, wow. Look at that. Lower Decks. Season four of Lower Decks. I'm digging how they're doing all their stuff like the right? TOS era movie posters. So we got, let's see, let's start off at the beginning. Um, season one. Got on Blu-ray. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, it was recently announced that uh, Lower Decks, it's uh, their final season so far. Very disappointed about mm -hmm. that. But hopefully it gets resurrected. Everybody that's doing it wants to keep doing it, but I'm sure everybody knows by now. But sign the petition. Season two of Lower Decks on Blu-ray. Neato. Right. So that's good. So the reason I purchased these was, one, to support uh, Lower Decks and let let the powers that be know that people uh, actually enjoy the show. I don't know gotcha. about the numbers. And stuff. By, Lower by Decks, season three. Yep. The search for, the the search search for, for Samantha and Rutherford. Right. And for anybody that's listening on the Patreon feed as a podcast, uh, just in your earbuds, Albie is just holding up the uh, season sets and showing the covers. And this is where in season three, they start aping the TOS movie posters. So mm -hmm. that looks like the search for Spock poster. And then season four looks like the voyage home, the voyage home. So. And what, what sold me on these was I was looking at, uh, I think it was Trek and tell, uh, not Trek and Tell, uh, Trek a Day. There's a channel on uh, YouTube I follow. He's got a small following, maybe uh, 600 or so right now. But if you look up Trek a Day, there's a person on YouTube, a great guy that I watch open thrift store finds and different Blu-rays and different things, Laserdisc. He likes Star Trek Laserdisc. He dresses in Star Starfleet uniforms. Great. So, of course, I'm going to watch him. Um, but <laughs> he was showing uh, the new season, I think. And uh, I saw... When I did more research on season uh, four of the Blu-ray, there is a Robert Duncan McNeil commentary on the Blu-rays. So as soon as I saw that Robert Duncan McNeil commentary, I was like, buy, buy, buy. And I just yeah, said, I, I should buy all of them. You're just like, take my money. Take my money. Take my hundred dollars. So uh, I have a truck and tell too. Um, Ooh, what is your truck and tell? I showed this at the end of the last episode, but we didn't do truck and tell. So yeah, we'll do truck and tell for this one. I don't even know where I found these, but um, these are glow-in-the-dark Kirk and Spocks. They glow in the dark? They glow in the dark. So I wish I could turn out the light here, but I'd have to get up to do it. But yeah, it's part of, like, this is what I... I don't know. I don't remember where I found glow these. Glow-in-the-dark, Mr. Spock and Captain so Kirk. See, they were attached What, what does like, it read? They were attached like this to the thing, right? Ah. So I them off. And I had them on my, my, bed, my bedstead. <laughs> when I was a kid. So when I turned out the lights, they would be flanking either side of my pillow. Um, wow. It's Illuminations, Star Trek, Glow in the Dark, Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, or Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk. Create a galaxy advent of adventure on your bedroom wall. Mounts easily. Hanger and self-adhesive squares included, which are in the back here. You can see them, the self-adhesive mm -hmm. squares. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says a part of the Star Trek glow in the dark universe collection. Now wow. I don't recall ever having seen anything besides these. Like I said, I don't remember where I found them. Um, and uh, they have little taglines live long and prosper is what it says under Spock's and beam me up. Scotty is what it says under Kirk's. And they have this whole like cool, like artwork on the back too. It looks so, almost like the size of a record album. I'd say. No, it's like the size of a like a big comic. Oh, okay. Like like a comic book collection here. As a so, of fact. does it have a year on it? Because I'm curious about that. I've never seen that in all of my Star Trek. It's a little bit bigger. So here's like my Plastic Man collection. Oh, okay. Over that, so kind of. What does it have a year on the Glow in the Dark uh, Kirk and Spock? Let me take a look. Uh, you know, I have a Cricut, right? I so I can, I can probably print and cut out every line art drawing of every Star Trek character and make a glow in the dark wall. Neato. Thing going on. Let me see if there's a year on this thing. Uh, you said when you were a kid, so it has to be what the forties. No. Yeah. The forties, at least <laughs> it says trademark 1991, which is impossible okay. because I had this in my bedroom before I was married. I was married in 94. Mm, so, maybe. you know, I 
don't did that know. ever freak out uh girlfriends that when no i think that's his 19 1981 is 81, what it that's says probably there so like that it. makes sense i was 11 um but i i was much older when i got i was probably got this when i was about 15 or so nice safe non-toxic printed on recycled paper and uh yeah the and the this this it's fascinating to me this is a shot from my favorite scene my favorite episode of tos where no man has gone before you see spock in his funky uniform mm -hmm. that's gary right there passed There's, out gary uh, mitchell standing yeah yep that's elizabeth denner <laughs> right there yep. so played by played by sally kellerman that's it sally kellerman yep she's yep. great in that episode yeah. yeah so she's a walking refrigerator unit um, <laughs> Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of like stuff on here, directions and crap. So yeah, neat trek and tell. I'm sorry, I went a little long. I really like I went it. A little long. I'm, I wish no, I that's could get perfect. I'm very interested in that. Like, turn off my lights. It's I'm rare like, that I've I've not seen a Star Trek thing, an item. So there they are. I really like that, and they they glow pretty good. You know what? You want to let's test it out. Yeah, test it Give out. Give me a second. Sure. Give me a second. I gotta I gotta do one thing. <laughs> While he's uh, turning the lights off, I'll vamp a little bit. I'd like to thank uh, our patrons uh, very much, uh, even the free ones. We appreciate you, and we invite you to participate. I turn the overhead lights off in the library. All right. And we're going to hold these up to the ring light just to give them a little bit of juice. All right. Hold All them. Right. Got to and charge them. Got to charge them. Here we go. Here we go. Hang on. Whoa. Yeah, and the thing is, yeah, my computer monitor is, like, but you, yeah, they're kind of glowing. Yeah, so, they have that so greenish glow. Yep. Yeah, I see. So it. if I take them in the back, yeah, like my computer monitor can't really. Back there. <laughs> that's that's the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm that's flanked cool. by Kirk and Spock. Yeah, and 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 they're glow in the dark uh, wall applique appliques. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not paper dolls. So get that. Right. No, they're plastic. Yeah, they're like. Oh, they're plastic. plastic. Cool. Yeah. 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 Very so. cool. I like so it. So there we go. I really like it. Kirk and Spock. All right. So that's it. That's my truck and tell. You got to read That's a good truck and tell. That's a good truck and tell. Um, ask me some questions. Okay. We have uh, some trivia questions. It's my turn to ask you. In the last episode uh, of Trek Exploration Disco, uh, we asked uh, you asked me three questions and I got them all right. And then two episodes ago, you got Disco going on over there. <laughs> uh, two I want to. I, I feel. I feel jealous of your background. That's always so lighty. Well, I moved into a space station, not cheap. I'm orbiting the Earth as we speak. Luckily, I got a better internet connection this week. Okay, ready? Let me get another card to block the answers. So, um, I'm ready. I'm born question ready. number one: mm -hmm. What cargo ship did Ensign May Mayweather grow up on? Oh, jeez. This was the cargo ship that went to the gangster planet that left the book. Um, or anyway, they, they alluded to the fact. Really? The gangsters in the 1930s. I don't that part. Um, what was the name of that ship? I want to say, I know I'm going to get it wrong. Um, Take as long as you want. There's no time limit. I'm, I'm going to say the Antares, but I know it's not right. No, that's, that's where Charlie X was hanging out, I think. Okay. Um, the it's right on the tip of my tongue, but I don't know it. This is going to ruin our perfect streak unless we can figure it out. And I love Enterprise so much. Was the episode name the episode the episode of the name of the episode of uh, Enterprise the name of that ship? I don't think so. That's probably the problem. Yeah, I'm just going to guess the Rutherford. I'm wrong. Okay, the Horizon. I did not the know horizon. that. Okay. The horizon. That makes more sense for an earthbound ship. The horizon. Okay. Question number two. We both got that wrong. Question number yep. two. In Star Trek, the motion picture, you'll probably get this one. Do, do, How do, does do, Lieutenant do. Commander Surak die? That I know. You mean Sonak? Uh, Sonak. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, transporter malfunction. <laughs> what we got back <laughs> didn't live long. In a transporter accident. Yep. Yes, That's a way uh, to get rid of the guy you cast for the show, right? Yeah, anyway. pretty much. Uh, which actor, question number three, Ron, if you're keeping track at home, which actor from the original series won multiple Emmys for playing the same character on two different shows? Which actor from the original series 
won multiple Emmys for playing the same character on two different shows. I think I know this. I'm going to, I'm going to have to say it's Shatner playing Denny Crane on Denny whatever Crane. those shows were. Yeah. Denny Crane, Boston public. And he was on something else as Denny Crane. I think right? I thought it was Boston legal, Boston legal. I don't know. Are they, know. are they labeled on the back? Yes. Should I read it? But you're right. I think, I think Denny Crane, um, William Shatner for playing Denny Crane, Denny Crane, Denny Crane. Mm-hmm. Um, on the practice and Boston Legal, the practice. Okay, I don't think I've ever so, watched the practice. I've was never watched either. With, uh, was, which one of those had uh, Jerry Ryan on? I don't know. That's a good. We'll point. say Boston Legal, so that they could have like the whole Trek crossover. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen clips of those episodes, of course, when I'm searching for Jerry Ryan, but I, I've never seen the full episode. I need to watch those. Cool. No, okay, I'm going to just ask you one more question because you got to get three right. Oh, okay. So we can still get three right every episode. Got it. Okay. Got it. Um, where is Bolana Taurus's destination in the Voyager episode, Barge of the Dead? Still for core. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> this says Grey Thor, the Klingon Hell. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, Grey Thor? I, I, hmm. Feklar's the Thor. I thought that's where Skeletor lived. Yeah. Uh, okay. One more, because you got to get three right. <laughs> what device? Does, you, <laughs> what de- what device does Doctor McCoy mistakenly leave behind? <laughs> His communicator. Sigma, we already answered this one. We Sigma already answered. Lo- Lodia. Uh, Sig- no, Sig- Sigma Iosha. Iosha. They're the Iosians. Sigma the Iosha action. two in the uh-huh. original series episode, a piece of the action. Yeah, his communicator. Very good. You got three right. Good yeah. job. Gotcha, gotcha. How does that so, come up? We talk about the episode. It's the, it happens almost episodes. every time. Every that's time a, it's happened. That's a Matrix thing. Crazy. I think it was Cameron last time. We were talking about uh, yep. Captain that's Herman. That's too weird. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So let everybody know where they can find us, how they can join our crew, and what benefits they might get being part of it. Oh, yeah. Um, you can uh, find us on patreon.com slash Trexploration. Trexploration. You, you can join us at many different levels uh, and you will get uh, at various levels different bonus content, access to um, shows and things. Different things. And, yeah, I, I don't have it in front of me and I don't really have the thing to Pull it up. It'll screw up my whole scene. So um, go to Trek Exploration, uh, patreon.com Trek slash Trek Exploration. You can see all that stuff, our different tiers and the different perks that you get at those tiers. Um, you can also uh, email us and tell us what you think of this episode or other episodes at Disco or any episode of Star Trek at uh, Trek Exploration Pod at gmail.com. You can also hit us up on Instagram at Trek Exploration Pod on X at Trek Exploration, and you can find us here on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Trek Exploration. Um, just remember, any comments that you give us may be used in a future episode of Trek Exploration. So, um, speaking of future episodes, would you like me to read yes. what's next? Okay, yeah, next uh, on our... If th- this has been our third episode discussion for season five of Disco, so if you want to find out what we think of season four in Disco uh, and the rest of the season of Disco, those will be bonus episodes are on our Patreon, and you can access those on the lowest level. I think is a cadet, five bucks. right? Five yep, bucks, cadet. five bucks. Five you bucks. get the rest of this season and more. Yep, yep, yep. So, five dollars. Uh, what is the next episode of Disco? We'll be talking about Christopher D. Philippus. Face the Strange Discovery Ooh. Season 5, Episode 4. On the way to the next clue, the USS Discovery is sabotaged by a mysterious weapon, leaving Captain Burnham leaving Captain Burnham. That's a hard thing to say. Captain Captain Burnham, Rayner, and Stamets as the only crew members who can possibly save the ship. In time. Wow. You think that has to do with uh, the little little robot bug that entered Adira? Riveting. No, I think it has to do with the um, the radioactive sand ex machina. Uh, Chekhov sand, I call it, from the first when – when they did the thing with the avalanche and they stopped the avalanche. They had the yeah. dots cleaning off the sand from the hull, and they're saying it has strange magnetic properties. You know that's going to come back at some yes, point. Yes, maybe, maybe that will be the cause or the cure. We don't know yeah, yet. It could but be. They did yeah. mention it. 
And as we know, they don't mention anything that doesn't come up again, unless no. it's a goodbye and a hello. Never. Um, Never. All right. Well, you know me, face of the strange. I, I enjoy I enjoy strange. So we'll, we'll, face we'll the see. strange. Yes. All right. Everybody's looking for a little strange. Isn't that Everybody true? Everybody wants a little strange. Uh, we got get about an hour here. and 15 minutes until I Next get to watch time. it. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> Isn't it crazy that I'm excited to see the next episode? Yeah, well, it's because we make this shit look good. Yeah. So, yeah. So. so Face is strange. Okay, I'm excited. Maybe it'll be fun. We'll see. Uh, I think that's it. Final words. Any any final words on this episode? The last we'll ever talk, speak about this out loud of this episode between you and me. <laughs> ever? If I, had, if I had to discuss it with anybody, I'm glad it was with you. Oh, same. Like I, I, what I mentioned today in our in our thread was I'm having a rough day, but I'm so uh, glad I I just remembered I get to speak with you tonight. So thank you, Christopher, for being my friend. You're welcome. At that point, this was yesterday. Well, that was okay, yesterday. That's true. At this it point, that was late. yesterday. Yeah, it is okay. a little late. I had so. a runner wire. Space station's weird. <laughs> Space station's weird. I'm still building it. I'm still, you know, it was an empty cargo bay looking thing, and now it's uh, slowly but surely getting there. And uh, the internet connection was uh, one of the things I had to improve upon. So my light's fading, 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 fading away. Oh no! Now it's turning blue. Oh, that's no. pretty cool. You got a ring light? That's cool. Yeah. So nice. anyway, I think it's time for us to ring it on out of here yes. all right so uh any any last words on this one what I are you looking forward to in the next you. episode what, what do you think is gonna happen uh, what are you looking forward to Face i'm looking strange. for um Sinequa in braids what are you looking forward to in the next episode uh i'm hoping i'm hoping we got more tig more linus and uh i'm hoping that uh blue del barrio adira has uh more to do sounds good all right. So until next time, uh, I'm Albie. And I'm Chris. Oh, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah.